What's going on, you guys? Fulst here, and I am back with another video. In today's video, I'll be doing an in-depth Evelyn jungle guide. Evelyn won the poll, so, well, here we are doing the guide. If you guys want to vote on champions to be the next guide as well, make sure that you keep an eye out on the community tab. Maybe hit the notification so you can see when I post a poll. And then make sure to vote, because whoever wins those votes will be the next guide, and that way you have some kind of influence and in who it might be. So that being said, let's just get straight into the rune setup for Evelyn now. Now the rune setup for Evelyn is just always electrocute. This gives you the best power overall when it comes to the early, well, when it comes to the entire game. Late game, Dark Harvest is a tiny bit better, but this doesn't make up for the fact that it just kind of doesn't do anything for you really uh, compared to electrocute in the earlier game. So I really just want to get electrocute. To follow that up on Evelyn's Sudden Impact is a big one. You, it, this is really easily procced and also the extra magic band from this is going to be helping you significantly. Now moving on here, you want Eyeball Collection. Really, this is just the better option. As Evelyn, you can easily walk over all kinds of wards. The only wards that you will not be able to kill are the control wards. In late, like in high, high elo zombie wards viable because people will keep buying control wards and you will just be able to clear them here and there. And then this will be easily stacked up because as Evelyn, you will always spot a control ward if you just keep an eye out because you are going to have those like red sparks under you when you walk past one. So zombie wards are viable there if you see enough of them, but lower elos especially, people don't place wards really, so it's quite, well not control wards, they might place their trinket ward or something, but as Evelyn you kind of just walk over them anyway, so you should be fine regardless. And then for here you have the Relentless Hunter really, this is just for the move speed across the map, that's really what you're looking for, you just want to be able to roam as fast as possible and get the best position you can in the mid to late game team fights to flank people from behind and all that kind of stuff. So just the move speed from this is the most valuable one. Now for secondary tree you have two options really, you have the sorcery or the inspiration option, the sorcery option is pretty much always Nimbus Cloak. This is very, very good because this allows you, as soon as you put your W on somebody, you can walk up to them, you can then blue smite them, and then Nimbus Cloak is going to give you a move speed boost while slowing them. So you're pretty much guaranteed to proc your W, which is a very, very good thing. So this will be a very solid option there, and usually if you go Nimbus Cloak, you want to combine that with Celerity. Evelyn's, move speed, or Evelyn's build is largely focused around move speed, or just getting a lot of move speed in the build. So having the extra gain in move speed from Celerity is very effective. This will help you get those positions, catch up to people, just flank them and kill them, really. So all the move speed you can get helps a lot. Now this is kind of similar while you go here. You have the Magical Footwear, which gives you an increased move speed as well. And then the Cosmic Insight is just very, very good because... Well, Evelyn's very reliant on her ultimate and her flash for escapes when it comes to those types of cooldowns. If you have a lower cooldown on those, it's going to be very, very nice for you as well. So this is really the other option. I personally prefer the Nimbus Cloak and Celerity option simply because this will just... Well, this is more like based around a more aggressive playstyle when it comes to just catching people. Because with this setup right here, with the Nimbus Cloak and a Celerity, people are not going to get away from you. Which is really just ideal for me. Now, going off here, you just want double adaptive force for the fastest, fastest possible jungle clear. And then for the resistances, it's whatever fits into the enemy jungler mostly, but also just the enemy team in general. So AD or AP, and that's about it for the runes. If you guys have questions on these runes, make sure to put those in the comments below. And I'll just get right into the item build now. Right, so for the item build on Evelyn, we have the Hunter's Talisman, the refillable potion, and then a warding trinket. Now, this is just the way you want to start. The Hunter's Talisman is going to give you your jungle clear, really, and then the refillable is going to give you a little bit of additional sustain. This is, for obvious reasons, not going to help you that much over the Talisman. Now, for the warding trinket, on Evelyn, I tend to still go for the Sweeping Lens, even though you will walk past a lot of wards. If you were to like go for objectives like Dragons and Barons or Rift Heralds mainly, but all those types of objectives, you always kind of want to know, or like the enemy buffs, because you're never going to be perma-invisible. Because if you're doing camps or doing objectives, you're going to be visible doing those objectives. So I'd still obviously go for the, uh, the Sweeping Trinket, or you can 
whatever that thing's called the oracle lens i would still definitely go for this and then that means just get this early place it at about 50 seconds to spot pathing from enemy junglers i usually place it defensive on my other buff that i'm not starting on to prevent me from getting cheesed and just place that back at about 50 seconds get the oracle lens and that will allow you to like invade play aggressive and know if you are spotted if you are doing the enemy's jungle camps so that's really what you're doing there now going on from here the initial item you want to just build towards is the runic echoes enchant with the blue smite on evelyn blue smite is very very useful since this will allow you to stick to people procking your w more easily combining that with nimbus cloak is pretty much going to mean that they're never going to get away from you or like away from you procking your w on them with the good enough position there is absolutely no chance they'll survive it so that's really it now for the initial back you don't necessarily have to just completely rush this because there is an item that is very very good on evelyn and i will always pick up early on as well before i even finish my jungle item and that's the dark seal you can pick this up pretty much on your first back as well depending on how much gold you have you can combine the dark seal with like a blue smite or maybe just an amp tome anything like that I like picking up the Dark Seal very early on Evelyn because I have a Magi's pretty much built into my build path. Since it's quite easy on Evelyn to keep your Magi's like alive, if you know what I mean. If you position yourself properly, then you should have no problems keeping your Magi's alive. Since you do have the ult for the escape, making you pretty hard to kill. And also you do have a lot of one shot damage. So that's really, I pick up a Dark Seal early. You don't have to rush into a Magi's by any means. You can still pick it up later without any issues. But just having the free ability to stack this is going to be very, very useful. Now for the Boots on Evelyn, I pretty much go Sorks every, every single game. Because Magic Penetration is very, very good. And this will allow you to just get through people with your rotation and just one-shot them. So that's really the Boots you want. And going on from here, Evelyn's build path is fairly linear so there's really no not not much variables to this which is very nice um, when it comes to learning her of course so pretty much her build will be the um, magis is going to be an item in the build you have the death cap with void staff is going to be one uh, one thing i do want to mention about morello is I personally don't like Morello whatsoever on Evelyn, simply because you're only really going to buy this item for the, like, Grievous Wounds. And as an AP champion, you'd have to invest 3,000 gold into getting, getting Grievous Wounds. Whereas an AD champion or an AD carry or whatever can easily just pay 800 gold and have pretty much the same item Morello is for Evelyn. So Morello on Evelyn, I do not recommend. That's definitely something I wanna say, so I will not go for that here. You have the Spellbinder here as well, Banshees, and you have the option for Zodias too. So this uh, looks like pretty much the build. So basically this build is gonna be, you're gonna go for these items just early on, every single game. And then moving on from here, you can instantly upgrade your Magi's if you want to. Usually what I tend to do is not upgrade my Magi's instantly simply because you are at this um, like item base, you're still very, very killable. So this is a risky place to still pick up your Magi's because Magi's, if you die, you lose 10 stacks. If you die with Dark Seal, you lose less stacks. It's like three or four or something. So the like ability to, at this rate, still die very easily is going to be noticeable if you pick up the magis they're instantly going to start focusing you more so because you do have the magis and they do want to keep your stacks down if you're fed enough this is not going to matter but if you're still in a stage where you're not extremely fed and like a little bit in between then picking up the magis one item later is usually what i do so the first main item on evelyn is spellbinder now, Spellbinder is an amazing item on Evelyn, like actually amazing. It gives you 10% move speed, which is just really, really good for positioning purposes. So having a better position, being able to flank with 10% extra movement speed is very, very good. Also, 120 ability power is a lot. But the main thing here is every single Q proc, every single cast from your Q is going to give you a stack on your Spellbinder. This pretty much means that stacking your Spellbinder from one jungle clear is going to instantly cap it pretty much because you're spamming your Q that much. So the Spellbinders is gonna be nearly capped at all points until you, of course, wanna use it. 
Now the moment you use this, you can gain a maximum of 80 ability power and 50% move speed over four seconds. What does this mean for Evelyn? Well, the extra 80 ability power is just obviously very nice but because that means that one single item gives you 200 ability power, which is crazy good. And then also the move speed pretty much means that people are never ever gonna get away from you as soon as you put your W on them. So let's say you get a decent position on the enemy ADC, for example, and then you put your W on them, they're gonna start running. Now, if you are coming from the right direction and are coming in from behind them, then it doesn't matter where they run because you, they will likely run into you. But if you have to catch up with them, then the extra move speed from Spellbinder, the 50% move speed there, plus the blue smite, Nimbus Cloak, they're never going to get away from you. Even if they flash, even if they do whatever they have, there's no chance. So that what that's what makes this item a very, very good pickup. It's a, pretty much a 200 ability power item with the ability to never like lose your target. And that's really what you're looking for. Spellbinder is very, very valuable on Evelyn and would highly recommend you to pick this up first item. So yeah, that's just there. And then from Spellbinder onwards, at this point, you'll be pretty much strong enough that if you want to, you can upgrade your Magice. This again, if you have 10 stacks minimum, it's going to give you the extra move speed. You can see 10% move speed here. If you combine that with the 10% move speed from Spellbinder, you have 20% extra move speed on top of your Relentless Hunter and your Celerity. You are going to be running across the map or flying maybe. You have like 500 base move speed and getting into good positions with 500 base move speed really is not that difficult. So getting those flank positions is going to become a lot, a lot easier. Now moving on from this setup here, now at this rate, you can build pretty much all of these items depending on the situation. So it's kind of whatever you want to finish your build off with in this item order here. So really, if you are like going for, if they are not really building magic resist, then you can just opt to go for a death cap because this will increase your ability power by 40%. And this kind of stacks on top of the spellbinder active as well. And then also Magi stacks, of course. So if you have like the Spellbinder active to have pretty much 200 ability power from this item, you can get a lot of AP from this item with death cap on top. You're going to easily hit like eight, 900 ability power at this rate, even more sometimes depending on your dragons and all that type of stuff. But your ability power value is going to just kind of skyrocket. And if you time your Spellbinder active com like uh, properly, you can just go in, E like an enemy ADC, like EQ, maybe W, whatever, and then just build multiple people to get out and one shot the ADC, you're going to do crazy cleave damage to the enemy team because your ability power is just that high. This build setup here will offer you a lot of high like ability power value and that's why death cap can be very good here as well if they don't really have the magic resist. If they start stacking magic resist then you need to get a void staff to be able to get the already higher AP you will have from these two items through the enemy's magic resist and onto their HP bar really, that's why you want to get that void staff and then you can build a death cap after. Now, if you are noticing that you are getting focused more and really just getting like hard dove on, then you can, you can if you want to, opt to go for a Zonias as well. This is gonna allow your team to potentially catch up or maybe just you to dive in, do enough damage and not instantly have to ult out. You can then Zonias, they might group on you a little bit more in your Zonias active and then you can still ult away from there. So that's an option. Usually though, I tend to not pick up Zonia simply because I just go for a one shot. I instantly want to press my ult to get out in situations like that. So that's really up to you. But Zonia's is a very secret item if they are hard focusing you. So a full build could look something like this. You can have these six items right here. And this is a very solid damage full build. You can easily flank people. You'll have the move speed from these two items. Now late game, you can still replace your jungle item for one of these defensive items, this is usually necessary because at this stage in the game, you're very susceptible to getting one shot really. So Banshee's Veil is gonna save you from that in a lot of situations where Zonias can also save you from the same types of situations. So it's completely there. So I would usually replace my Runic Echoes for a defensive item in the late, late game, just it, so it helps my survivability. You will not need the extra move speed you have from Runic Echoes anymore because you have pretty much the rest of your build. The 20% move speed here and just the ability to flank should be more than enough to not need your Runic Echoes or Nimbus Cloak. You can still proc your Nimbus Cloak by smiting a minion, of course, if you want to. So keep that in mind. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Evelyn build, guys. If you have any questions, make sure to put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, so welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Evelyn, of course, into a Diana. Now, this is actually a pretty bad matchup for Evelyn, since um, you both really don't don't really do much early game so it's gonna be more so a farm fest which is pretty good in that situation however Evelyn doesn't really d uh, deal well with heavy heavy dive champions and also Diana's pretty tanky so actually getting a kill on Diana while she like like whilst I get out alive or she doesn't actually just one shot me back is not gonna be that easy so yeah I mean it's going to be good for the early game, but apart from that, it's going to be a little bit tough to deal with. Now, on the enemy team right here, as you notice, they have a Nocturne mid lane and a Fiora top lane as well. So it's pretty heavy dive setups. And I, as Evelyn, it, it gonna, I'm going to struggle with that. I might die a couple more times this game simply because of like Nocturne ult or just the ability from them to dive. Now, the, the good thing, however, here is that they have a Jin and a Zerath, which are pretty much turrets. They don't really have much mobility and they will like start like stand still and hit people from a distance. So as Evelyn, you can easily opt to flank those two champions and those two champions will then become a lot easier to kill. So that's really the good thing there. So my main objective in team fights and in just general, this game is going to be looking to flank the Jin and the Zerath to be able to one shot them and they will should not be able to deal with that too effectively. Now, as you've noticed, um, I place my ward here just to know if the Diana might like start here somewhere and then path towards my blue. She doesn't really have a way to get over the wall, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm just gonna go for general vision on this one. If you are playing against a jungler like Jarvan, for example, or whoever it might be, then you wanna watch your buff camp just on top of the buff to know if they were to double buff and then cheese you that way. like. It's, it's a very effective ward against cheesy junglers, and that's really just there. So if you are facing those types of jungler, or if you're just unsure in general, always just, it's safe to ward your other buff camp. The reason it's safe, because if the enemy jungler is going to invade you, they're always early game at this rate are going for your buff camp. No one's going to invade you and then steal your gromp first and then into your buff camp. That's just not gonna happen. So at the moment they will start your buff camp, this when you will know. So that's really the ward you wanna place. Back at 50 seconds, get a sweeping trinket and then you should be good. As you see me have a sweeping trinket right there. So for Evelyn, the initial jungle clear is just going to be a full clear. Now something to note on Evelyn is um, the way you wanna use your abilities to clear really is you start pretty much every single camp with your Q. Put that Q on cooldown as soon as possible, and soon the, the moment your Q is on cooldown, you proc your W, you kite the camp a tiny amount, your Q cooldown will come back pretty much, and then you can clear the rest of the camp going from there, as you can see right there. The reason you don't want to lead the camp off with your W is simply because this will cost you a couple seconds for your W to prep, and at this rate, you could have in that time easily just waited for your Q cooldown and then use your like the, the cooldowns to sync themselves a little bit better so you don't lose that much time clearing the camp. So keep that in mind if you're clearing, just Q the camp first and then W the camp afterwards, as you can see me do right here. I Q it first. Now in this case, the Nocturne does invade me, which is a little bit annoying since as Evelyn in the early game, level 2, you're not, re not really going to do much. So the Nocturne has free reign. I'm pretty sure he had this warded with the way he invaded me just now. I can check. Yeah, there it is. That's the ward. So he's going to look to play aggressive on me, which isn't really good for me because I'm not able to fight him back. And I do have a Kassadin mid lane, which is even bigger of a problem for me, simply because Kassadin doesn't really do anything early game and he just has the free reign to kind of do this. Now, he is a little bit like, I don't know what he's doing. He could have easily cut him off. As you can see already, he was standing still in this position for a very long time. He does have Ignite, so in this specific case, he could have flanked his Nocturne a little bit easier to get the free kill. Now, he's a little bit like struggling, and my bot lane isn't really responding to an invade either. Which, just in general, as a combination here, is just very, uh, yeah, I'd say a lack of 
map awareness from my mid and bot lane they could have responded to something like this faster in landing a free kill bot lane might not have even had to react if Cassidy just reacted a little bit faster now Noxion does get out and in this situation we are not even able to get anything really so we kind of just zoned them out of my jungle if mid or bot any of them reacted a little bit faster in those types of situations we would have gotten one or two kills easily but yeah what can you do sometimes your uh, solo queue laners just do not want to help you out i suppose that's that's really that for the invade now going from here you obviously want to just continue your jungle clear now the main thing here that i do want to note like is with that invade my jungle clear got interrupted so usually at this rate you would have already cleared the scuttle crab on top side and would have been like more okay in a lot of situations i probably would have just the moment he invaded me right here kind of ignored him and walked further However, I thought with like proper reactions, I would have been able to get one or two kills out of that situation. So that would have been a little bit better than keeping the jungle clear going. Now, obviously you still want to keep your jungle clear going, but at this rate, you want to check top scuttle first. Uh, you can see him doing it right here. And the main problem again is I cannot really contest this Diana however much I want to. Simply because my, I have a Cassidy and I guess a Nocturne and my Malphite is like 2 HP. So at this rate, I can contest it just a little bit, zone her off. But at this rate, the moment the Fiora and the Noxion start to react, and I have no real team to back me up, there's nothing I can really do at this rate. So I'm just going to have to go and clear the rest of my camps, as you can see. So this is just a pretty rough start. Um, kind of getting forced down by the entire enemy team. Noxion invades, all that type of stuff, whilst your team doesn't necessarily respond too well. And that can be kind of awkward in a lot of games and a lot of situations. So now the thing with this position right now is I can opt to go for this camp if I want to. However, the enemy bot lane is very pushed in. And at this rate, I am not sure yet if the bot scuttle is up or not. So I can definitely still opt to go check for that as well. I can also walk past the dragon here at the same time to see if diana is doing it because diana is pretty good at soloing drake so i i want to check all those situations check scuttle scuttle is not here she's not doing dragon and the enemy bot lane is still pushed up so i can easily even though i do not have my passive yet and this is usually what people don't expect because people expect evelyn to farm to six more so and then with her passive with her invisibility gank so getting like maybe one early gank in like this can be very beneficial as you can see land just land a w there he flashes away. I'm just going to opt to go for Zeref, not hard commit too much on the Jin, And I do still pick up first blood, which is very, very good. Eventually landing me a kill. Now again, there I made a tiny error. You should always, as I mentioned earlier, start with your QE on camps and then wait for the um, cooldowns whilst your W is prepping the camp. So I lost a couple of seconds on that clear right there. Uh, couldn't get in range of the Nocturne. Spell Shield in combination with Fear makes it pretty awkward for me to actually kill that guy. Did flash after him and hoping that I would be able to kill him, but that was not the case. So mainly what I'm focusing on right now, as you can see again with the uh, initial engage with the QE on the camp. And then whilst I'm waiting for my cooldowns, I'm prepping my W on the camp here as well. Not losing any time. And the moment I hit level 6 here is pretty, the, pretty much the power spike you're looking for. This power spy kind of allows you to slow down your clear just a little bit. You definitely still want to opt to jungle as efficiently as possible in a lot of situations. But in this case, you definitely also still want to look for those ganks or the pressure, the flanks more so. Since you are like a champion now, like an actual good gank champion now with your invisibility. Now, right now, uh, I saw the Noxion moving towards my red. Also, Diana is somewhere in this region. So I am looking to get collapsed on again by the enemy mid laner mostly whilst my Kassadin really is not able to do much. So I'm just going to spam assist because I see the Nocturne right here. Um, I definitely like with my invisibility as you can see you will instantly go into a lot of healing. So I can definitely stay out of the vision here and heal my HP bar back quite effectively. Now in this case my bolt and mid laner actually do respond so this makes this a little bit easier. Diana jumps in here. I do, however, pick up the... Actually, do I pick up the red there? Not sure. I think Diana might pick it up here, but I'm just going to be able to go in. And then I just want to ult Diana for the easiest free kill. I also do not want to get hit by any more damage because that would mean I die. But my ultimate's going to execute her and I will pick up a double buff. Pretty much putting me at a 2-0 lead, which is going to be very, very good for me. 
And right here, we see the Zeref um, pretty much out of position at this point. If my bot lane just runs on them, this is going to be very easy. The they the, I would say this is a little bit too defensive, in my opinion, with Azillion. He could have easily walked forward and then started placing bombs in front of them, which may, would have made it a little bit easier for him to get the stun on them. I am going to come in here from the side, dodge, kind of dodge his stun. Um, I get like Zillion ulted way too early, in my opinion, but that's either or. And the Zera flashes out, so that's perfectly okay. Getting a flash in those types of situations is fine. I think if the Zillion might have walked up a little bit further, then that would have resulted in a double kill, potentially, but hey, what you know. Now for your camps, this is also something you could do early game. You can pull the blue and the gromp together. The way you want to do this is you just want to initially start the blue, then you can W the gromp, and then let the W prep. You want to kite the blue towards your gromp, hit the gromp off your W and then pretty much position your gromp and blues close together and then you can queue from here doing damage to everything and that's going to speed up the clear a little bit. Now I see the Diana on bot lane doing Drake so I definitely want to make sure that I take the scuttle on top side that's up and then check her top side jungle to make sure that I can take some camps from her because if you are not able to do anything against the objective like the dragon in this case you want to make sure that you at least punish the jungler for doing it so you take their camps wherever you can, as you can see again, with the starting the camp, then pressing W. Here, just taking whatever camps I can from the Diana, and pretty much just trying to walk away at that point. Looking for the gank on mid lane. So I'm just going to kind of stand here, and um, I was expecting Nocturne to probably walk back into lane, maybe like here. But that was not the case. So I'm just standing here in a position where I could maybe get a flank on the Nocturne. It doesn't look like it's happening. So I'm just going to go and look towards going back in my jungle camp. Now in this case, Nocturne comes back into lane. So what I'm just going to look for is I'm just going to walk into the lane with my invisibility. Make sure that you stand out of range from the Nocturne. And Kassadin then is allowed to jump in. Now Diana was pretty much there to instantly gank as well, which is a little bit awkward. I wanted to execute the Nocturne as fast as possible right there. And at this rate, knowing that then I just used most of her cooldowns. Also with the um, ult timing here, actually. Then I kind of whips her ultimate there, which is really, really good for me. But I also wanted to keep my ult to potentially um, the, towards the Diana ult. But in this case, I get out. And right here, this is just very disrespectful towards an Evelyn. Um, she would not have, not have been able to chase me since her cooldowns. But right now I just get my passive and then I will go invisible, gain some HP, prep my W and she really just highly disrespects me which is very surprising honestly and kind of just dies off that for free. Now as you can see the bot lane, my bot lane is very very low so I think that if they're going to go aggressive, if they're going to walk forward then I can easily get into a position where I can do something about this. Now the only issue here is that... Um, I currently do not have boots whatsoever. This guy has tier 2 boots and Zeref is somewhere like completely here. So if I were to get on him, he has a lot of move speed on me. Pretty much making it impossible for me to actually catch him as you can see right here. Kind of a result of that. I just cannot get in range. I didn't really notice that he just rushed tier 2 boots. So I guess that's really good for him and he gets away with that situation there. If I would have noticed... That he had tier 2 boots at this point. I would have just walked this way and instantly just opted to go for the kill on Zareth. Because he was a champion that I could kill since he has no boots. And, or well, he has boots now. But I guess he had no boots or maybe tier 1 boots. But he doesn't have this type of boots. And I would have just been able to walk this way, kill the Zareth. And then just walk away. Because the Jin's never going to be a realistic kill situation. So yeah, knowing that now I would have done that. But in this specific situation I just was expecting to kill the Jin there. Um, not expecting him to have that much move speed to get away from me. So we see the Diana right here. And I'm just gonna... I just want to ping that I'm on my way. Now the only slight issue about this situation is... We see the Diana clear the ping. Or clear the ward here. Uh, he gets executed. We see the Diana clear the ward here. And my misfortune kind of just runs in face first into a Diana. Which is not uh, the most ideal situation. Pretty much just making this whole situation a little bit awkward. The, um, yeah, getting me actually caught out in the end and the misfortune kind of just ran into it. I'm not sure why she didn't just wait a tiny amount for me to get into a position or a better position there, but yeah, what can you do? Now this is going to cost me some camps in my bot side. 
I was just still gonna check. I didn't think they would be up because I think Diana would have just done them. Also Nocturne or someone just did my wolf camp as well, which is pretty on like it's it's just getting annoying at this point. They're just perma invading me, and I really can't do anything about it because I'm just gonna get three v one or two v one or whatever. So I'm definitely not gonna be able to contest the dragon if they're gonna do it this early. So I just want to look towards getting the Fiora again. She was going to be out of position here. She did not have flash, which my Malfa let me know. So I can easily just opt to go and um, yeah, kill her. Now we see Nocturne show up on my blue right here. So I definitely just assist ping, spam assist ping, and hoping that my team would react. Malfa is still pushing the wave, but Nocturne is already just walking away, which is fine. Now the issue here is, um, I noticed earlier that there was going to be a control ward, or just a normal ward here for my control ward. So what I was expecting is, I placed the control ward down here to instantly drop the vision from this ward. Because I was kind of expecting the Nocturne to ult me at this rate on my blue buff. So I just I just thought he was going to go on me. Wasn't not the case, he actually went top lane, but with Nocturne's paranoia, I had no idea where he, is, where he was actually going. So I, that's the reason I dropped the control on that ward again, simply to drop the vision so he couldn't ult me. And yeah, he wasn't gonna ult me either way, but I didn't know that. Again, checking Diana's jungle to see what I can pick up here. And I see the red and then I see instantly a fight going on on Dragon. Which again, my team kind of just, um, I don't know what happened really, they just died. So this, this is just a little bit awkward once once again. Now, right here, as you can see, I'm really just looking for the assassination on one of these like one of these targets. They are eventually gonna split up. So if I just keep my position right, then I will be able to flank one like my priority target here is the Jin because he's gonna be the easiest one to kill. So with this, as you can see, me being behind him and putting the W on, people are gonna think, or generally they're gonna think you come from either one of these directions. So from the front. If you are in the back, then this is just going to be easy because they're pretty much going to run into you, as you can see. I just wait out my thingy there and my E, kind of, or, my, or rather my Q kind of bugs or something. I don't know what this is, but this is just stupid. So right here, as you can see, just carefully watch the Q. I press it multiple times, but it goes straight through, like straight through him, I guess. Doesn't hit him, so I, he actually doesn't die and force me to ult, which is a little bit annoying. I might have had to ult regardless, but in this case, he should have just died to my Qs, which is a little bit unfortunate there. And right back into focusing on trying to get another assassination. Okay, W forces him away, and then here, the Diana should be out of position to pick up a free kill. Going on from here, we suggest I'm just gonna look for those positions again. The main thing with Evelyn is you want to get those flank positions in. Looking for assassinations for the enemy team when they walk a little bit too far forward, as you can see me do right here. I'm just looking for an opportunity to go in on this situation right now. Go in on the Zareth or the Jin. Um, I have a Kassadin and a Zillion here, so they don't really have the hard engage unless Zillion would land a double bomb. So that's a little bit of a problem. I'm waiting for like an opportunity to go in without just getting fully dove by three people. Now another thing I do want to mention, actually the maxing order, um, I, you always want to go with Q first, your initial clear is going to be Q, W and then E, and then max Q first. I max W second, simply because this just lowers the cooldown on the, this is just going to be a very all round thing, and with the move speed build that I use, and then also Nimbus Cloak, it's going to be very easy to actually proc this. If you are struggling a little bit more to play around uh, proccing your W effectively, you can also max E second for the more consistent damage, I suppose. However, this is just going to be more effective in more situations. So that's really the maxing order, Q, W, E. And yeah, just to having said that. Okay, lo looking here, the moment Fiora backed is the moment I was waiting for. So I was just chilling there. Waiting for the Fiora to back, because the moment Fiora backs, I can then just go in with my team, as you can see right here. Get the position on this guy, charm him, get a free assassination. Fiora was the only champion that was really holding me back there to go in. Now here, he jumps in. The Zillion instantly ults himself, which I don't think is a very good play from him. Simply because, at this point, I am currently worth the shutdown gold. I'm currently worth about 200 shutdown gold. Also, I'm a very high priority target, whilst he himself is 0-3. So, I'm 
So either way on this dive, I probably think he should have ulted me because that would have like an, been more valuable. I would have been able to survive and probably actually uh, kill the Nocturne on the back end of it. But that's, yeah, he just kills me there, which is a little bit unfortunate. The Zillion gets up, but I mean, what's Zillion really going to do at this point? I could have probably turned this fight, so that's a little bit, little bit unfortunate there. But yeah, what can you do? It is whatever, I got caught out of position there by the Nocturne Ultimate. And this is really the problem with like those heavy, heavy dive champions for Evelyn. The moment they get on top of you and you do not have your ult or your flash, you're pretty much guaranteed to die. So it's a little bit awkward when you're facing like Diana and Nocturne that are just really good at diving you. And that's yeah, not the ideal combination really. Now however, this is the moment in time that I will pick up my Spellbinder, giving me a lot of extra move speed. And also as you can see... Alright, this is alright actually. I wanted I thought I was gonna go for my camps, but I quickly didn't realize the Diana here. Now, another thing here is um, a lot of people might think, well, it's probably best to just run straight at Diana. That's most definitely not the case on Evelyn. In a lot of champions, this could be the case if you have like gap closers or anything like that. But Evelyn is all about those flanks, and you do have the move speed with the spellbinder already to do that. You also have Relentless Hunter, or well, yeah, I do at this point. So I have a base of 477. As you can see, which is a lot of move speed if you compare it to like this Diana, for example. She has 390, so that's that's a massive, massive difference. So I'm just looking again for those flank positions. If Diana is going to run away, where is she going to run? Maybe here. Probably th maybe this way could be the case, or just this way. So if I walk like this, I can walk maybe this way to cut her off here, or maybe this way to cut her off here. So that's really here. As you can see, I put my W. The instant you pop your W on somebody, they're going to start running. It's just, it's a given they're going to start running. So you have to be in a position to catch them when you use your W. If you're not in that position, you do not want to use your W preemptively because they're just going to start running. Now here, I put my Spellbinder right before I engage it since that will give me a little bit of an extra boost. Now at this rate, I didn't really have too many stacks, but it's just an... Um, a more automatic thing I do. The moment I get a catch on somebody, I instantly pop that Spellbinder. Even if you have low stacks, it's gonna give you a little bit extra. But you just wanna pop that and then get the extra AP from that. Just get used to doing that, because if you don't do it, you're gonna miss out on a lot of burst damage, and that's definitely not ideal. So keep that in mind. Now here, as you can see again, I just use my W on him. Pretty much, he just instantly placed the pinks over, like, placed the control ward over the wall, spotting me, unfortunately, but she's never gonna get away from a situation like that anyway. Now here, I'm just checking for some vision, looking for a situation to maybe um, do an objective here soon. In this case, not really happening. I'm just gonna go reset and pick up the Needless Large World going to my death cap. Now, you might think, why aren't you buying Magi's? You have 10 stacks on your Dark Seal. The very simple reason for this is... I am very easily killable at this point. I currently 9-2-2, two two, which is not a bad score. My CS is a little bit lacking, but that's mostly because I just get perma invade or got perma invaded by like two or three champions this game. Uh, completely pressured down by the Nocturne and, and my laners not being able to do much about that, as you can see right now. The general game position we have isn't that great. My bot laner is 0-6, my mid laner is 2-4, and four, my top laner is all, also has like four deaths, so it's not going that great at this point. But this is the moment in the game where Evelyn actually starts to pick up and um, be like incredibly scary really to deal with for the enemy team. So I'm just gonna try to look for a position to catch people. Now something that I do wanna note right before it happens, um, smiting with Evelyn or winning smite battles with Evelyn is incredibly easy. Like she is one of those champions that is just in possible to get out smited on if you use your ultimate your ultimate alongside the smite execute is gonna easily execute a baron or a dragon for about 17 to 1800 even 2000 health the later the game goes so outsmiting that for any jungler is impossible you can even outsmite nunu without any problem simply because of your execute damage from your ultimate it's really really easy and also very very safe let's say i would have come in with a blast plant over the wall i jump in over the wall I instantly ult to hit the dragon and then the moment I press ult I wait like a tiny amount and then press smite as well. Just just a fraction of a second. Just wait that and then just ult smite together and you're gonna just burst it and then instantly shoot back over the wall. 
So that's one of the things you can do. Now, I don't have the blast plan in this case. I don't have my flash up either. And yeah, so that's not going to happen. So what am I looking for here? Zillion gives me a move speed boost, which is very nice. Uh, Misfortune starts ulting, which kind of forces them back a little bit. And at this rate, I see an opportunity to just walk up. And as you can see, this like the HP range here, instantly smite it from 1500 HP. There is literally nothing that this, this Diana could have done to outsmite me there, allowing me to get the free dragon. So that, that's really something you want to look for. And if you have the Spellbinder as well, currently this is at 91 stacks. But if you have this as well and you feel um, like you need a little bit of extra damage, then you can also pop this to gain the extra 71 AP I would have got at this point, making my ult do even more damage and then just execute the dragon from even higher HP. So that's definitely something you want to look for with that ultimate. Eve ult smite is very deadly and it's easily gonna allow you to get any smite. Like you will, you will win every single smite. There is absolutely no chance you're gonna lose it if you hit it. All right, so in this position right here, um, we have the position on them now. We got the dragon and they are pretty much forced back. So at this rate, we just wanna catch them one by one. That's the ideal situation here. So in this way, in this case, they are backing off this way and the Diana is pretty much alone. So if we were to walk as a team onto the Diana right now, that would have been the best play. Now, however, my team kind of just forces a split position, I guess, which is a little bit awkward for me. This Malphite is going to die here, but my bot lane, instead of being positioned down here with me, uh, killing the Diana and then maybe able to force through with me, they're going to run away from me, which is going to instantly turn this fight into something a little bit awkward, as you can see right now. Because I'm not able to kill her and they instantly just collapse onto me simply because my bot lane just kind of abandoned me with the positioning they made. They're still full HP so they definitely still would have been able to fight and probably would have been able to win. Because the moment we killed Diana and the moment we then would be able to peel back on this would have been better. But I, I just kind of get a little bit abandoned and um, die for it really. So that's a bit unfortunate there. Now the funny thing here is that they are spamming Diana's smite because she lost the dragon that's that's a little bit toxic because it as i mentioned earlier as any jungler it's not fair to smite against an evelyn if she uses her ult to get the smite because it's impossible to outsmite it so yeah this is also one of the situations if i were to have magias by now i would have lost 10 stacks however only having dark seal i'll only lost four so that's really good there Alright, my team just kind of um, goes in again, I don't know, it's whatever, they've been doing that all game, really just ra running into them one by one. Pretty, uh, I'd say poorly positioning in teamfights as well, but yeah, what can you do? It's just one of those types of situations where you're just gonna have to deal with it. As Evelyn, just mainly want to look for those flanks, and, and that's about it. Oh, so right here I get spotted by the Zareth, instantly stunned. I'm gonna ult backwards, but at this point I get caught out. Now this is the problem with Evelyn, really. You are very squishy, so if you make a single mistake or get spotted out of your passive and um, stunned or CC'd or whatever, dove on, you're pretty much guaranteed to die. So I kind of mispositioned there, walked a little bit too far forward, not having the vision on Zareth, and that cost me like quite a significant amount there. That's, so that's not really ideal for me there. Uh, team is chasing them. Probably being able to pick up one or two free kills here, which is very, very good. And this is going to look pretty good for us because even though we're still gold behind, I mean, I'm, st I'm even behind the Diana as well, even though I'm doing pretty much the best out of my team right now. We can definitely still make a comeback simply because we outscale them. So we do have that going for us. Evelyn late game is very, very scary. Cassidy in late game is insanely scary as well. Evelyn late game is mainly scary since you can perma and vis walk across the map and if you find the 1v1 situation against the ADC for example, they're never going to win that and you're always going to one shot them. So here I just want to defend and whatever I can get some farm. I cannot 1v1 the Diana at this point so I'm not looking for that but I'm looking to maybe collapse on the Diana with my Misfortune or my Malphite. In this case, Malphite and Misfortune do not want to walk forward, so I just instantly drop that situation right there and start back to going and trying to clear some camps. Now, the problem here is my camps are mostly still being cleared by the enemy jungle, uh, the enemy laners, I suppose. I'm getting pressure down still, that's why my CS is so low. Usually, as Evelyn, you would want to have a lot more farm, um, looking towards the 160, 170 range. 
should be a good range for the type of minutes we are in game. However, this game specifically, that simply was not possible since I was getting pressured off of my jungle pretty much the entire game. So that's, yeah, it is what it is. You will lose some farm here and there, but that, that's just what you got to give up. You do not want to randomly just walk in and die to um, try to take one jungle camp from the enemy. That That's just not the way you want to play that. You just want to make sure that you use your Q or use your abilities wherever you can to keep stacking your Spellbinder as much as possible, however. I hear Nocturne dives in. I am definitely not able to try to, like, to stick in that, so I instantly ult out. The Zillion ults me on the back line here, and um, yeah, getting focused down by dives and ultimates pretty annoying and very hard to deal with. In this situation, the Diana is mostly out of position right now, so we can definitely opt to assassinate her. I charm her, and we barely just don't have the damage here. Malphite does not do any damage. I was hoping I would be able to do just a tiny bit, bit more. In this case, what I just noticed is a pretty, pretty bad, actually, since I do have my Spellbinder stacked to 95, and I could have used it on the engage here. So seeing that I missed that opportunity is... Pretty sad to see, and that's definitely something why you want to get used to using your spell, spell binder right before you go in. Because the extra 76 ability power, 70 ability power, however many it would have been, would have definitely been enough to one-shot the Diana. So looking back at this now, which is that's really, really sad to see. Now right here, they're definitely going to look towards doing this dragon again. So I'm looking in a position now. The control ward spotted me, unfortunately. And right here, I'm just going to look for an opportunity to assassinate somebody. As you can see, I get the kill on the Diana right there. And my initial thing, the moment you get the kill and you don't have your ultimate up or your flash up, you instantly just want to get out of that fight as soon as possible. Get back into your passive, start your HP regen as you, as you can see, and then look for a better flank again. So that's what you can see me do right here. Just one more time. I'm going to look to go in with a flank, one shot somebody, one shot the Diana, kite down, uh, Jin walks and gets caught out. And then instantly look for the flank on the Zerath again. Right here, I'm going to ult away from the like the Nocturne. Still got feared, however. And then I get Nocturne ult to just kind of trade 1v1, I guess, and dive me. And that's just a free death again that I just could not do anything about, really. So that's a little bit sad there again. So I'm getting a lot of deaths this game simply because there's nothing I can do about them. Uh, one of the deaths was me being out of position, and the other deaths is just... Simply due to the enemy's dive potential, and that's really, really annoying as Evelyn to deal with. If you don't have your ultimate up constantly to deal with that, that's also one of the one of the reasons why you can notice that I did not opt to upgrade my Magi's uh, this early on. I'm just opting to build death cap at this rate and skipping Magi's for now, simply because I'm just not able to deal with the dive. And with not being able to deal with that dive, it's not worth building a Magi's and then dying with all those stacks. So yeah, that's, that's really that. Malfa teleports bot lane instead of doing Baron with us, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, it's okay, I suppose. Me in my passive again, looking for a better position. The way, this is just really Evelyn's complete playstyle. You just want to use your passive invisibility to pressure them down. As you can see, they're using random abilities to try and spot me out here and there. That's what enemies will do. They are very generally very scared of an Evelyn, and they definitely should be. So make your, like, use your passive and use your invisibility to your advantage. Now, the Malphite dives in a little bit too far there. As you can see, there's no way we can actually properly follow this. Nocturne ults, and I just get kind of caught out in a position where I'm going to have to ult to the side to even get out. I just have to ult for the position, and that's just the way it's got to be. Now here, this is pretty much like a split fight. Again, Zillion wasn't there. Nor Malfa dives in in a pretty poor position, and this just goes to show that my team just really likes suiciding a lot this game, which is definitely not ideal. So for me, I'm definitely not going to look for an aggressive play here. I'm going to look towards maybe procking the Guardian Angel he had there, and I just use my Spellbinder to get a move speed to be able to dodge Jin slash Zerath ultimates. Jin ult in that situation, but yeah. Alright. Now at this rate, I'll be able to pick up my death cap here, giving me a lot of extra ability power. And this is the rate, where, this is the, pretty much the moment in time where you are nearing level 16 and you're getting like more items. This is the moment where even though the enemy team has a lot of dive, you will still be able to pick up a Magi's quite soon. And yes, I do still pick up a Magi's even this late in the game, simply because you are Evelyn and at this rate, Magi's is still going to be very, very useful. 
Now, the good thing here, by getting some of the dragons, by getting some of that position on those dragons, and the smite wars that I won with my ultimate, I will be able to still pick up this dragon right now and pick up the Infernal Soul. Picking up Infernal Soul is going to mean a massive amount for us. Going into the late game with an Evelyn, with a Kassadin, with the Infernal Soul, uh, you are pretty much guaranteed to win off of this dragon, really, because the one shots is just going to be insane from me, and they will not be able to fight. Now, as you can see, the way I play this fight out, um, there's really not much I can do if I'm not in a flanking position. I'm not going to be very good in a, a straight-up face-first type of 1v1. I definitely want to look for the flank, so I'm going to walk back a little bit to see whoever dives in, to see where I can still get a position. Now, in this case, here, the Diana jumps in, ults me closer, and I'm instantly forced to ult, because the moment that Di or, sorry, the Diana ult would have landed, or the Fiora would have come in from the side, then I would have died to the Diana ult guaranteed. So that's really essential to, to use your ult there to dodge the damage while still being able to deal some damage yourself. As you can see, the damage from my ultimate here is still enough to cleave for a good amount. And the only thing that I did here that I did wrong, again, I I'm not, I, I use it a lot and I use it in, in a lot of situations, but sometimes I just forget to press it. And again, right here, I would have, if I would have pressed it, I would have gained 50 extra ability power. My ult would have done a, a, a decent amount more damage in that situation. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter that I didn't press it, so that's pretty good, but in, yeah. Just keep an eye out for the Spellbinder to use it. Now here, off of picking up the Infernal, we can pick off the Baron as well. This is going to be very good for us. And then from here, I'm just going to clear some camps here to get the blue and everything. And right here, you see me pick up the Magi's still. Now, I pick up the Blasting one as well, going into a Void Staff, I would imagine. And then the Magi's is just going to give me the 10% extra move speed, since I do have those 10 stacks. So I'm really, at this point, I'm really just looking for the flank. I'm looking for a position where I can assassinate somebody. As you can see me, just that that's not something you can walk past, so they know where I am now. But I'm just looking for a play, looking for anyone to really walk out of position. I want to use my sweeper there. I don't want to face check the brush. Use a sweeper to see if the enemy is in the brush or not. I'm really just looking for that with the sweeper, not so much wards, because yeah. Now, here my Zillion gets dove on by Nocturnal. There's really not much I can do about that, so I'm just going to let him die. I, at this rate, just want to really wait for my Misfortune to get back up, for us to re regroup, sorry. But my team, just not a big fan of that, I suppose. So I'm just kind of awkwardly waiting, I suppose. I don't know. Malphite right here, walking forward again. I really just want to defend the base, wait for a position to our Malphite can ult in. He didn't get a chance to ult right there. The... Um, Zeraf presses Zonia, so I don't even get a kill either. But yeah, here, again, Molfat should never have been in this position to get caught out like this. He should have just been further back. He did not get a chance to ult because he got permanently CC'd. I was hoping that he would just ult uh, the moment Nocturne started to fear. Because if Nocturne starts to fear and then he ults, um, he's pretty much unstoppable with this. So this, um, yeah, he, he well, he can go in and then knock the enemies. And then right here, the moment that would have landed, whoever it would have landed on, if it would have landed on just Zareth, that would have been completely fine because Zareth would have just died to my combo. Um, right there, it doesn't matter if I use it right now. Uh, I like it has a hundred stacks, so it will give me a lot of extra AP. But with the damage I had right there, with the build I have, I have 800 ability power. Using this or not, it would have guaranteed one shot the Zareth, and that was my target in this case. So it's completely whatever in this situation. I still have it to use it right now. So don't need to use it right now. And I'm just going to look towards um, getting the flank position. As you can see, the way I'm kiting this, that ward doesn't matter. It doesn't spot me since I am invisible. And I'm just going to look for the position to, towards these two again right here, as you can see. And there, the moment I jumped in, I also used my Spellbinder. Pretty much landing me a current 990 ability power at this point, and that's very, very deadly, because that's just going to chunk and destroy them, really. So I get a double kill, and then I get dove on by the Nocturne Ultimate, which is just amazing, because, well, I, there's nothing I can do about that one. So that's another death, which, against this enemy team, is just very, very unfortunate and mainly annoying, but what can you do? I think I'm getting close to my Void Staff, yeah, I'm 200 gold away from my Void Staff, being max build. This is very good. I initially wanted to just um, hopefully ping my team back 
clear this camp, get my Void Staff, and then join the fight. That would have been more ideal. However, the moment I hear Darkness and I see my team walking forward, I am just going to run up because I don't have a choice. And again, the way out, the, the thing I'm going to look for is not being in this fight, but being on the back line of their team. Jin is going to be pretty much a turret. The same goes for Zareth. Now they died, but the Jin here is still going to ult, and I'm just going to go and opt for the Jin. Whilst he is ulting, there's nothing he can do. And from here, I can join the fight to execute the Yora. So that's really that. I want to clear that wave out, push the waves in towards a better position for the dragon. Malphite currently is top lane, which is not that ideal. And yeah, he's going to be too late in this fight. Actually, he does have teleport in this case, so that might, might end up going well. Uh, the good thing here is um, also why the Spellbinder, you instantly stack it fast. You have 70 stacks again, which is very, very nice. And with the move speed build I have, I am pretty much out able to outrun a Nocturne, as you can see right now. With the Spellbinder and everything, I'm just outrunning him whilst he was chasing me, which is really, really good. And right here, from outrunning him, he ignited me, he ulted me, he used the engage on me already. I can use my passive to heal back up, which is not a big deal. As you can see, I gain a lot of health back in the invisibility right now. And I'm pretty much back on the map in full HP, no problem, whilst Nocturne used his burst. Now, for again, looking for that flank position, looking for a position to come in from the side, deal some damage here or there. Now, the thing here is, I do not have my smite up. What's that, what does this mean? It doesn't matter if I'm on dragon or not, because... Smite or no smite, well, sorry, no smite, nothing I can do. My, um, What I'm going to do, like, do some damage to it, whatever, doesn't do anything. If I had smite, then sure, I could have been able to secure it with smite. So instantly what I'm going to do right now is just instantly um, kind of walk towards it. We have a control bar here, so the moment I start walking towards the dragon, that is the moment that they think I might be on dragon still, instantly turn around with my invisibility, and then I'm going to look for that turrets, really. That's really the, the or, well, turrets, I guess. So the Zareth and the Jin here are heavily out of position. I ult him, standing pretty much back and get the charm. He stuns me and then here I just go in, ult the Jin and double kill him. Now this is something like I would not have helped this dragon really much at all. And instead I can opt to double kill them because they have no escapes. And I was easily able to get on top of them and kill them. And from here I can then opt to go and get this inhibitor. Picking up the inhibitor, we need to back soon because, well, um, the mains are pushing in our base, which is definitely not ideal. And from here, I sell my jungle item really for the Banshees. I definitely need a Banshees in this specific game because I am getting dove on, like really dove on. Now, I do want to... I'm picking up Banshees over Zonia simply because I would like to have the magic resist against Diana's damage and also Zareth poke, really. But the Zonias doesn't really help me much either way. It's mostly just going to be the extra shield that would help me uh, dodge like some crucial abilities like Zareth stun when I go in. So that's really why I bought it. The Zareth, like I'm looking to flank the Zareth and the Jin, And this will prevent me from getting Zareth stunned as the first ability he would hit on me. And that's really that. I, I do not want to face check brushes as you can see. I'm checking for wards at the same time as... Uh, not face checking the brush so i don't i'm not sure if they're in here but if you press your sweeper um then you will be able to see a silhouette of them and then that way you will see a little bit sooner because else they will see you coming still and yeah now as you can see with my positioning again i am just looking for a flank looking for anyone to get that flank on uh, this guy dives on my Zillion. Zillion instantly ults himself. There's absolutely nothing I can do for this guy right now. Simply because if I were to jump in right now, I probably would have been the initial focus again from their burst. Nocturne is kind of zoning me out of the position and Diana still has her ultimate. So I'm just waiting for my team to catch up. And then right here, the moment they do, I charm the Diana. Nocturne gets ulted by the Malphite. And with the Elder Dragon, we should be able to end this game. And right here, he has stopwatch, which is just unfortunate. Usually that would have easily been a one-shot, but yeah, what can you do? So yeah, that's pretty much it for Evelyn. This is the way you should play it. Look for those flanks, look for those positions in the mid to late game with your invisibility. Going in from the side, assassinating people, assassinating like very vulnerable targets. In this case, I did have the Jin and the Zeref that were very vulnerable in that case. Now the only issue with this game for me is I am quite low on CS. Um, I got pressure out of my jungle quite a heavy amount. So usually as Evelyn you do have very good clear speed that you want to make use of. And farm needs to be a little bit higher in your average game. However with the amount of kills or kill participation I got. 
I was still able to carry my team through this one and luckily we were able to pull out a win in the end. So yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to the thumbs up button as well. If you guys want to see more videos from me in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.